After the horrific disappearance and murder of Sarah Everard, who went missing while walking home from a friend's house in London, there has been a lot of talk online about just how unsafe women feel walking alone or at night. And I don't actually disagree. I think people's personal safety is an extremely important issue, and I have absolutely walked to my car at night carrying pepper spray in my hand, knowing almost any man could overpower me. But you know what I have never carried in my hand while walking to the car at night? F***ing feminist platitudes. I am all up for a conversation about keeping women safe. But once again, when I went to check out the hashtags discussing this, I found the same usual useless conversations over and over and over again. Don't tell women to protect themselves. Tell men to stop raping. Don't protect your daughters. Educate your boys. I'm sorry, are these people under the impression that rapists don't know rape is wrong? That if someone just brought out the legal documents and explained it to them, they'd be like, oh, well, geez, sorry, ma'am, I had no idea. Here's your bra back. I'll see myself out. Rapists know that rape is wrong. They are horrible, evil people because they decide to do it anyway. Yes, we should educate both sexes on proper consent and safe sex, but relying on that to keep them safe is stupid, and it is not preparing them for the real world. Yet for some reason, people have gotten it into their heads that giving women the tools to defend themselves is victim blaming. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's just changing who the victim's gonna be. I'm joking, ish. <laughs> Dealing with the world as it is actually helps women. It actually makes them safer, unlike the people who seem to have more interest in making money off of constantly publishing utopian platitudes for retweets and clicks. Don't protect yourself, ladies. Tell the world it needs to change. Great strategy. I'm sure that's really gonna help when they need it. It's utter stupidity. Saying the world shouldn't be bad is not a plan. No one disagrees with you. But you know what is a plan? Some of these wonderful tips I have prepared for my lady friends who want to keep themselves safe. And for dudes, I suppose, because technically you are significantly more likely to get murdered by a stranger than a woman is, but that doesn't really fit with the narrative as a society, so we just won't talk about that, I guess. <laughs> the first way to keep yourself safe is be dangerous. I'm sure you've all heard this classic, God invented men and women, but Smith and Wesson made them equal. There have been amazing innovations to help women protect themselves. I have seen knives and tasers that just, you can pull out of your bra, keychain, pepper spray, all of it. Great stuff. And of course, the best one, if it's legal, girl, go get yourself a gun. And I totally understand some of these options aren't available everywhere. Some places it's not even legal to have pepper spray. Uh, there was actually a girl in Denmark who was charged for using pepper spray to defend herself against sexual assault, which feminists, there's something useful you can lobby. But I'll tell you right now, I would rather be alive and unscathed in a courtroom than dead or assaulted thinking, wow, I am so glad I followed council rule number 3457.2, which bans spraying extra strength hairspray into my potential murderer's eyes. <laughs> Protect yourself first, ask questions later. Number two, watch where you walk. I called one of my girlfriends, Evelyn, who worked as a police officer for many years, and I asked her in her experience what she thought a realistic preventative measure against assault would be. And she told me that a huge overlooked one is just literally cutting hedges and adding street lights. As an officer, she was repeatedly dealing with assaults occurring on one corner of a pathway. So she put in a council request to have all the hedges trimmed back, knowing that as a cop, nine times out of 10, it's not actually going to be her or another police officer who comes to help you, but instead a random civilian who is there first usually a good man stopping a bad man. If there is some creepy unlit alleyway or forest path you have to walk down to get home from work, you can actually put in a request with your local council or government for them to add lighting there for your safety or to have tree trimming occur so that you can be seen from the road, which greatly deters crime. Tip number three, situational awareness and what you're wearing. Lauren, how 
dare you? A woman is never at fault for what she wears. Of course, no one is saying that, and if they are, they're stupid. But being aware of factors that make you stand out as a potential target is just basic security 101. Um, just to give a bit of backstory, I have traveled to a lot of dangerous areas for my work, and I'll tell you right now, I would pick a single local as my security over 20 armed guys with guns any day. Because the guns may be able to get me out of a bad situation, but the local is going to prevent me from getting into it in the first place. I remember one of my Turkish guides telling me, uh, hey, Lauren, your bleach blonde hair just kind of stands out here at night in an area with only men who haven't seen women in months. Maybe just cover up to make yourself less likely to be a target. Oh, and another tip, if you sit down, pointing the bottom of your feet at someone is extremely offensive here, so try to avoid that. Was I offended by being told what to wear and how to sit for my own security? No. Do I think he was trying to blame me or say that had something happened, if I didn't do these things, I would be at fault? No, that's absurd. He was being extremely helpful. If you travel to different countries with different cultures, even if you just go to a different part of your own country, do some research into what areas may be rougher than others. Do some research into the culture. Consider things that you might wear that will make you a target or stand out more. No security expert would consider these precautions unreasonable. Although I can tell you right now, having discussed this with friends of mine in security, Sometimes, to the detriment of women, they will not mention things like this anymore because precautions have been labeled offensive and they might lose a job, which is disgusting and ultimately harming women. Number four, booze is one of your biggest security threats. This is pretty basic. If you plan on getting sloshed, bring a friend with you, go in a group, don't accept drinks from random people you don't know that you didn't see being made and make sure you have a point person for getting home. Uber actually has an amazing system if you go into settings and safety where you can set a trusted contact who gets delivered your trip data. I used to give it to my mom because moms love stalking your every move anyway. And if not that, you can always use find my friend on iPhone with a trusted friend of yours and let them know you're going out. So at least someone's worrying if you don't come home. And lastly, set your boundaries and know when they are crossed. If people think they can take advantage of you, they will. Maybe your boundary is as simple as someone making a rude sexual comment to you. Perhaps you don't care that much, but if they get grabby, that's too far. Whatever it is, when that happens, you need to make it clear, full stop, get away from me, I'm not interested. Then take steps to ensure your own safety from this individual, remove yourself from the situation, leave their house, call a friend. If you're in a club or a bar, ask someone else to stay with you or walk you somewhere else. There are so many more security tips from professionals you can go and read online. I would highly recommend it regardless of your gender. Don't outsource your personal security. It is far too important. and. This stuff is super empowering. I, of course, have been in terrifying situations. I've had men come on to me that I wasn't interested in at all. But you know what? At the end of the day, I actually felt empowered being able to walk away from and take steps to protect myself from future situations. And I really, really just hate how modern women are kind of only permitted to talk with the language of oppression. We're only allowed to talk as though we are victims and, and not as though we are capable human beings who can walk away and protect ourselves from situations. I just really hate that. And to me, it seems like in popular media, when women are sexually assaulted and they go through that terrible experience, it's like that's supposed to become their identity forever. An assault victim, that's all you are. Like we're supposed to let the person, the horrible individual who assaulted them, define their world forever. That is just insane to me. Women are more than just victims and I'm tired of our culture portraying them as such. I know a lot of ladies from all realms of politics who share this opinion as well and are sick and tired of it. This video is particularly aimed at women because I guess that's just our cultural conversation right now, but um, to men as well, you got to protect yourselves too. There are a lot of terrible things that happen to both genders that when it comes to men really get swept under the rug by the media. I mean, one of the 
biggest serial rapists of all time in Britain, Sonaga, was raping exclusively men. He literally raped hundreds of men and kept getting away with it for years. You rarely hear about the guy and... <laughs> Oh, this one just messes me up. One of the really, really tragic parts of the story is Sonaga taped most of the rapes he committed. And even after police showed some of the victims the videos of them being assaulted, they refused to come forward and refused to admit it was them in the video because of the stigma around men being raped. This is partly why it took so long to catch Sonaga. No one was coming forward. The men just could not accept it. Even when confronted with the evidence, they would rather lie to police than admit to themselves that they had been a victim. We've got a huge problem there as a culture, a really, really terrible dichotomy that is not helping either gender, where women are only allowed to be victims and men are not allowed to be victims at all. And in this case, what we've created is a system where women don't know and are not given the tools or expected to defend themselves in any way, which is extremely harmful, and where men don't talk about it when they are victimized because they're not allowed to be in that role, apparently. And please do not give me this nonsense about this being patriarchy hurting both genders and how progressivism will help give them both a voice. I can tell you right now, feminists are not creating a safe space for men to talk about their problems by telling them they're all responsible for assaults and they are all dangerous like Clementine Ford did in response to this situation. And they are not empowering women by telling them they are all victims and that it is offensive to take your own safety into your own hands. So please do not give me this nonsense about how it is actually progressives who are trying to tear down this dichotomy. It is not. The truth is no one, no political group, no political leader or movement is going to just change the world for you and Thanos away all the baddies. That is not how reality works. What you can change and what you can work on is your own life. And you can learn to protect yourself, even if all of these political platitudes can't. And that's ultimately why I've made this video. I hope it helps some people have some skills that actually translate into the real world and can really help. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, uh, if you appreciated it, please hit the like button, subscribe, and check out the links below where you can support me. Thanks for watching and letting me get this rant off my chest. I'll see you next time.